Hello, this is Faith. Um, I'm going to do a short video. I'm going to try and make this one short. Um, I'm going to do a little unboxing and then I'm going to talk about the second way I channeled all that nervous energy and anxiety that I wanted to devote to curriculum that was never going to work um, to, into thinking about how I ran my house, how I decorated my house, and how I would strew learning opportunities for my children. So it's the second in a series. The, my last video was about um, how I got into buying books and researching about books and learning about authors and that sort of thing. Um, so this one will be about strewing and the atmosphere of the home. But first, I got this box from, um, this is a place I had not heard of. When I was homeschooling, we did insect lore we did two of the, you know, raising butterflies, and um, and we did one of the silkworms, I remember. And then I had heard of Acorn Naturalist, but this was a new one to me, Nature Watch. And look what they did on the box. They said, packed with love, with lots of love and sunshine, which is a nice personal touch. But anyway, these are something that I got because we're going to have like a nature pre-K for the little four-year-old that I watch. And so I just thought I'd show you what I got. They come in these little kits, they're $5.75 each. Now they also seem to um, cater to schools, so you can get like big bunches of them. But for just one, I just need one for the four-year-old. It was pretty inexpensive. They come in these nice reusable plastic um, kind of baggies or whatever you call it, which I like. I appreciate that because plastic is not good for the the uh, earth and so it's good to be able to reuse these things this one i like this is a make your own cloud identification window which i thought was really cute they've got photos of the different types of clouds and then it's open in the middle and you just put it together i think this was for ages it says ages eight and up but i'm just gonna help him i don't think it looks that hard and i think he could when we go on our walks we could take that with us and see if we can uh, identify clouds so that was one um, let's see another one that I got is the food chain and this is for ages five and up they give you a cardboard tube and you I guess you color or you cut out uh, different animals so it shows a, a food chain then one fits in the other like those little Russian dolls or something so you got the owl and then a snake and then a mouse and then a cricket and then something down here. I'm not sure what that is, grass or something. So that's, that's a cute little thing. Again, it was just $5.75. Then um, learning about honeybees and making your own honeycomb candle. I didn't think it would be that small, but that's okay. Uh, we can make like a little muffin or something with a candle on it to celebrate something. So this was another one. This says ages four and up. Um, uh, this one looks fun. What age is this? Ages five and up. They just give you the pieces to uh, put together this little bird whistle. I thought that would be fun. And then this is the last one. And then the last one I got. They had more than this. These are just the ones that I came up with or that I chose. Um, this is a Animal Track bingo game, which I think would be fun to do because we do sometimes see animal tracks when we go on our walks and it'll be a fun little bingo game to play. So that's what I got. So Animal Tracks bingo game, bird whistle, uh, honeycomb uh, candle, uh, food chain, little activity, and the cloud identification window. So I think that'll be fun. I think we'll be able to do it. I don't know when we'll do them. Like I don't really have it planned. Um, once we get started, this will, I'm going to get official in September. So, But the other thing that I wanted to address was the second way that I thought, when, once I was thinking about this, of how I diverted that anxiety into something that for my family was more constructive. And that was thinking about the atmosphere of my home. Now, I am a terrible housekeeper. I'm ADD, and it really comes out in the fact that I just gather clutter wherever I go. I'm like, you know, pig pen in peanuts and there was always a cloud of dust. Well, for me, clutter. And it's every horizontal surface gets covered with clutter and I'm always, always trying to fight it. 
and I give up for long periods of time and I don't even see it. You know, I, it's one reason why I like to entertain is that that makes me see things and then that makes, that gives me the motivation to clean up. Um, so since I didn't have a very nice, you know, orderly home, even though I was, I felt like I was always trying to achieve that, um, what I wound up doing was going vertical. <laughs> so, um, you know, instead of uh, strewing on things, except for, there were exceptions, like that mass station that I talked about where we put it out at the end of a counter, there was a jar of pennies and a, um, it was on, on like a tray or even like, it wasn't always on a tray because sometimes they needed the tray. Sometimes it would just be sitting there or it would be like on a piece of uh, cardboard or something just to sort of differentiate it. But it would often get lost in the clutter too. And then when we'd clean up, it would be rediscovered. So it was sort of a silver lining to being so cluttery. When you finally get around to cleaning up, it's like discovering things all over again. Um, Anyway, so we did have that. That was a horizontal thing, and I would strew on coffee tables, so I was always trying to clean off the coffee tables so that there would be a place where I could put, you know, library books or, you know, if I found a puzzle or an article or anything, you know, and uh, I, I would uh, put it on the coffee table, mostly in uh, our family room. Um, but because I did have so much trouble with clutter, I went vertical and it started when a um, long time ago when we would sit around the table. Now I always had the habit of reading out over breakfast. It was a way of getting people up. My family didn't want to get up at the same time but if they knew I was going to read to them then they would be more inclined to come to the table. So I just that just sort of naturally started that I would say oh come on and eat breakfast and I'll read the story to you. Um, and so that that sort of naturally happened. And then I'd gotten this curriculum called English from the Roots Up and I really liked it and I wanted to be able to use it, but I was no good. I was discovering that I was no good at, um, you know, implementing curriculum in any sort of uh, consistent way. And so what I did was instead, I typed up the word and, and you know, um, different the, the root and then the different words that you could find it in and um, a little bit of a definition, and I stuck it on my refrigerator. And this was the beginning of fridge schooling, what I called fridge schooling. When we would sit at the table, there it would be right there at the fridge, and we'd be at the kitchen table, and the fridge was right there, and I would just stick it up with a magnet, and I would just point it out. And that's how it all started. So we wound up redoing our kitchen, and we knocked out the wall, and we made our family room and our kitchen all big, one big room, and we moved the table over because we put a, an island in. So I was no longer able, and then I think the front of the fridge wasn't magnetic anymore. We got a new mag, uh, a new fridge. Anyway, and I, I grew to regret this because I discovered I'm not an open design person. I like rooms and doors shut, and I'm more introverted than I realize. But at the time, open design was the big thing, and that's what we wanted to do. So once we were away from the fridge and I couldn't do that anymore, I started using my pantry doors. And I would just stick stuff up with tape, and then I would have to scrape the tape off, but, you know, it worked. And so that's what I would do. And I, I started doing it with the spelling words using a phonics pathways. If I found, like I would find things like a, there'd be a meme going around about the top 10 grammar mistakes. So I would print that out and stick that up. Or, you know, the top 10 words that are uh, most often misspelled. Or um, you can put up like a, a one of those math um, multiplication squares, you know, where you have the, the different columns, the numbers across the top and down the side. And it's, what do they call it? Multiplication chart. Uh, Charlotte Mason liked to have the kids work it out, work those out, figuring out the patterns that you can see. Stuck that up there. We had a poster um, about prepositions stuck up on the pantry. I mean, I would just do that. And then um, when my youngest was about fourth grade, was it? Uh, I got involved with this co-op called Aquinas Learning, which you may have heard of. I, I'll link to it below. And um, 
I really like their K through six program because what they do is every week they have things that you that you post that you show your kids. Some people do it with binders. I knew one woman who would set up a trifold, one of those trifold boards that you have um, that you use for like science fairs. She would put them up that way, but it would have like a Latin root, and it would have I don't know, can't remember now. It would have some geography, and it, I can't remember now what they were. Uh, might have been a phonics rule or a grammar rule, um, something about a, the, a saint. I can't remember now what it was, but it was it really um, it really dovetailed with what I had started doing on my own. So I did use that for her. She was the youngest, um, and her oldest sister was already going off to college practically, or was in high school, and then she had three brothers, and she was very extroverted. And so we wound up joining this co-op just to give her a day out with with uh, other kids her age because she was so extroverted but anyway so so that really dovetailed well well with um, the way I strewed um, information by by just putting it up on the wall but I did lots of other things too we had a big globe in our family room that we were always referring to I got a big world timeline, world history timeline from uh, Cricket Media, I think it was. And I had that up in our upstairs hallway wall. It was this great big blank wall and I was able to put that up there. Um, you know, I had uh, one of those map of the world's uh, shower curtains. Um, that sort of thing, just strewing in that way, just the way I decorated. Um, so uh, another thing I had was the easel. Uh, that would be somewhere where we would be walking by and sometimes I would put math problems up there to do or I would put up uh, Latin verb conjugations things like that just stuff that I wanted the kids to see and I could just bring it up in conversation so that's how I would strew and strewing is a um, it's a unschooling concept that I think was made popular by Sandra Dodd who's a secular unschooler radical unschooler unschooler but it was just that idea that you're just strewing your children's path with all sorts of ways uh, all sorts of opportunities to learn and I did it fairly obviously by deliberately sticking stuff up that I intended to point out to them but you can do it in subtler ways too with games and books and you know, I, I knew somebody who used to send their kids links and they would send emails to their kids with it, things that they thought were interesting links their kids might like. That was one way they did it. Um, so there's all sorts of ways to do that, you know, both obvious and, and maybe a little indirect. And the reason why I think strewing works in the home, and I'll try to wrap up, is that um, I, I go back to Charlotte Mason's quote about education being an atmosphere, a discipline, and a life. And when you strew like that in your household, you make your household this rich opportunity to learn. And it creates this atmosphere that leads to discipline. You know, discipline, what does it come from the Latin verb to love, I think, isn't it? Disco? I can't remember, but it, it, it does, you know, disciple and discipline come from the same root. And so uh, if you have a rich atmosphere like that, um, then it leads to discipline. And of course, that discipline leads to this life of learning. So, all right, so I'll just wind things up there and I will talk to you later. Happy homeschooling. Bye.